What is going on everybody? We're back with the second episode of my record collection. So look, same as last time, if you did see the first part, go watch that first. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it with the next record. We got G. We're starting with Gorillaz. This is their debut album, self-titled. You see the track listing there. Uh, these Gorillaz records that I'm going to show you are all just covered with really nice artwork. Of course, Gorillaz and the Jeep. It's an absolute classic picture. Uh, it's 2D here on the back, track listing. This last track, uh, the Clint Eastwood remix, is actually behind a locked groove. So if you want to listen to that track, you actually got to put the needle on that track yourself because uh, once it gets to uh, the end of M1A1, it won't move to the next track. But uh, yeah, that's Gorilla's self-titled. This next album was one that wasn't on vinyl when I started buying them in February. So I was looking at uh, either getting the vinyl, like I was looking at getting the Vinyl Me Please version. That's obviously Demon Days. But they did remaster it, so it comes out. Uh, this is black vinyl, double LP. You've got uh, inside, you've got all the track listing and credits, as well as artwork for all of the individual songs. So, you know, like when you see like promotional singles of like dare that's the artwork that was used in feel good ink and such uh uh you've the track listing at the back a lot of these pressings this record was pressed really loudly so um some cheaper like kind of all-in-one turntables will actually struggle with certain parts of this record uh, my old record player did uh this one not so much but uh yeah it sounds great if you have a good enough record player uh, it's not the fault of your record player, it's the fault of this record that it will only work with cheaper, um, or it won't work with cheaper record players. But uh, if you have a good record player, definitely go out and pick up this record. Next we have Gorillaz again with Plastic Beach. Uh, this cover is a lot different to the one you'll find on like Spotify or if you get it on CD. Uh, obviously just a lot brighter the color scheme i think it looks a lot nicer on vinyl you have uh you have three of the band there's no russell in the back cover i never realized that so russell's not actually on either side is there no there's no russell i never realized that uh then on the inside there's again no russell so i suppose well he wasn't there for a lot of the uh story i suppose well yeah that would be cyborg noodle and not actually noodle so yeah there's no russell or actual noodle in that um, the sleeve artwork for this one, uh, the sleeve artwork for all of them is nice, but uh, this one especially I like. You can see uh, uh, 2D holding a copy, or well not a copy, a framed picture of uh, Hunky Dory. That's 2D holding that there. And uh, yeah, just looks super nice artwork there. Now the Russell shows up there and there's a nice picture of Cyborg Noodle. Uh, these Gorillaz records, they all sound great. And uh, the artwork on them is just so nice. If uh, if you like your vinyl artwork, then I definitely suggest picking those up. Next one, I got this one off Discogs secondhand. Um, it's the Fall. Apparently, there was only a thousand copies of these made, uh, or ten thousand about that. It's pretty expensive. I have number uh, four thousand three hundred eight. I spent like a hundred and forty euros on this, and it is uh it is kind of beat up you can see some damage there and like along the top it's not too bad and uh, the record sounds great uh you know just more uh nice artwork this obviously isn't my favorite well, it's not obvious but this isn't my favorite gorillas record but uh, i think revolving doors is like a top five gorilla song it's an album worth owning especially if you want to complete a gorilla collection another uh gorillas album sticking with uh theme humans i think it which is a pretty underrated album yet yeah, struggles in a way because it's so long um that kind of takes away uh some of the stuff and some of the transitions from songs like straight away this the um the transition from like a song like ascension to strobe light and then to saturn's bears uh, that's pretty jarring but uh, I feel like there isn't like an overall theme. It's just not stuck to all that well. It does kind of feel like a compilation album or uh, just Damon and his friends complaining about politics. But uh, the artwork uh, is pretty nice. 2D, Russell, uh, Murdoch. Uh, so that's Noodle. That's 2D. 
Uh, and then this picture is like one of my favorite pieces of art from uh, all the Gorillaz albums. I absolutely love that. You've track listing on the back of the sleeves. Um, you've track listings even, not just track listing. It doesn't just list one track. And then uh, there's more really nice artwork. I think the artwork for uh, humans is really nice. The art style that they used for humans was pretty nice. They didn't go too far with it. Uh, last but certainly not least is this uh, collector's edition copy of uh, the Now Now. Uh, that's obviously like not coming up on a camera at all. But uh, we just open it here and I'll show you guys the art prints. Because it came with a bunch of goodies so you got these art prints here that one that one that one whoa 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 Put that down there that this so that's all the art prints that it came with it's all pretty nice and the next thing you have is you've got the record itself front and back which comes with that picture which I really like I got that on a t-shirt I've worn in a couple of videos on this gorgeous blue vinyl sounds absolutely fantastic on vinyl uh, this whole package was not all that expensive it's about 70 bucks so uh, I'm pretty sure it's hard to come by now especially new but uh, for any gorillas or any just fan of records of vinyl this is definitely a package i would recommend picking up i don't regret this at all i i had one of uh it comes with as well it comes with these six uh buttons i'm just going to keep them with the record and this 2d on the back of that came with a download code there's no need for me to show you guys that uh as well as this notebook uh let me just just notes and uh, lyrics it's pretty nice uh, it's uh it's beefy enough obviously like you know there's not a whole lot of actual writing in it but there's just little illustrations it's just like a little notebook that uh 2d the singer of the virtual band made it's a pretty nice package uh i loved the art style they've gone for so far this was obviously when uh, the pa Powerpuff Girls character Ace had taken over for Murdoch for a little while. That's a storyline that's uh, still unfolding if you're a Gorillaz fan at all. Next, we are going on to Green Day, American Idiot. This is an album that uh, I basically got because I really liked it as a child. It was one of the first full albums I ever heard. I, I do still, to be honest, think that there is, on this track listing right, that I have beside me, there are some really strong tracks. And the transitioning between tracks, I think the whole album just flows really well. And that, like, while a lot of the tracks are weak, the whole flowing of the album isn't actually, you know, all that bad. I do think this album has... Uh, I'll just see old song lyrics and song titles in here. Um, I think that this album has some stuff to merit. It's not a great album, but it's certainly not a bad one. Next we have Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. Absolute classic metal album. Invaders, Children of the Damned, The Prisoner, Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, and Hallowed Be Thy Name. I mean, that's just some of the tracks. But this could be, like... The best of Iron Maiden almost. This is this track listing is just super strong. I think the artwork it's pretty funny to look back on now. It's not aged all that well, the back cover, but I think the front cover looks just great. It's great to own this on vinyl. Uh it doesn't get the most amount of play. It's the only maiden record I own. It's the only actual maiden album I've heard front to back. But uh definitely need to get more and kind of expand my maiden collection as I'm holding up this Judas Priest Painkiller. I pick this and I'll just show you the next record I have as well. I've got a Painkiller and um, Screaming for Vengeance and I picked both of these up for 12 bucks each on Amazon so I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend going on Amazon even if you've never heard these albums or Judas Priest because I'd never heard either of these albums front to back. The only Judas Priest album I'd heard is the next one I will show you guys. 
Uh, but these bo- 12 bucks each. I'd heard some of the singles, some of the uh, more popular tracks. Both of these albums are extremely strong. I'm going to see Judas Priest in January, opening for Ozzy Osbourne. I cannot wait. It's going to be a great show. Uh, we have this year's Judas Priest album, Double LP, Firepower. Um, I think the uh, this album cover actually reminds me a lot of the Screaming for Vengeance one. It feels really nice, The uh, these little rockets or whatever you're going to call them, these futuristic rocket looking things feel really nice to touch. Uh, you got big credits in here, Rob Halford, Glenn Tipton, Richard Faulkner, uh, Ian Hill, Scott Travis. You've, you know, your thanks and all these. Uh, but uh, my, Rob Halford's vocals in this album are fantastic. I'm going to definitely talk more about this album when it comes to Year Endless because this is going to make a couple of them. Next, another album that came out this year, something I just got... Uh, in the post last Friday was my copy of Yay. I hate being bipolar, it's awesome. Really nice album cover, if you don't know the story of that. He was on his way to his listening party for this album, took this picture, this album cover was supposedly just, you know, came up with at the last moment. Track listing on the back, it's seven tracks, it's only like 20 minutes. If you're living in the States, uh, I definitely recommend picking this album off, off Kanye's store. It is only 15 bucks. I paid like 35 for this because shipping. Uh, I bought this at the same time I bought Kidsy Ghosts. My copy of Kidsy Ghosts hasn't even shipped yet, but uh, I have this to tie me over. Uh, it's still a great album. I, I'm looking forward to get my copy of Kidsy Ghosts. That will definitely be in a video for the future. Next, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City, because of course it doesn't have Section 80 on the vinyl. This is an album that I absolutely neglected so hard. I'd only given it a couple of listens. When I got this on vinyl, because I was in a record store, and I was like, oh, you, you know, it's the only Kendrick album I don't own, because I'd picked up everything else. So, obviously, spoilers, I have the rest of Kendrick's albums. I, I just had to pick... I just picked this up. So like, you know, might as well complete my collection. I knew Section 80 wasn't on vinyl. But, oh, my God, this album is, like, damn near perfect. Like, it's damn near perfect. It is uh, a more accessible, I think, than To Pimp a Butterfly, which a lot of people would say is Kendrick's magnum opus. And I agree. I think both of these albums are honestly 10 out of 10. But, um, yeah, this album... For accessible hip hop, you've got just pure bangers on here, more so than to Pimp a Butterfly. Uh, this album is fantastic, and it just tells a great story from front to back. Kendrick, like really, with his major studio label debut on this project, just showed why. I mean, there isn't anyone in the game I think better than him right now. And of course, Kendrick to Pimp a Butterfly. Look, there's nothing I can say about this album. I mean. It's just garnered such rave reviews, such critical acclaim, owning it on finals, absolutely necessary. It's one of the first albums I ever picked up. It's the first one I ever bought in a record store. I went to the record store, saw this, and was like, no, you're mine. I'm absolutely not leaving this record store without this album. Uh, the album that got me into Kendrick, because I just saw the great uh, acclaim it was getting track listing on the back it's it also got me into a couple of other artists like thundercat and uh, rhapsody uh i really would have never listened to them if i hadn't heard this album album cover is fantastic absolutely love this album next we have uh untitled unmastered uh of all kendrick's records this is, oh wow boy focus of all of Kendrick's albums, I think this is the one that translates to vinyl the worst. That's pretty obvious because, I mean, understated cover, unmastered tracks, not exactly going to sound a whole lot better on vinyl. That being said, for basically an EP of a bunch of leftovers from, like, the Pimp Butterfly recording sessions, eight tracks, they're all pretty good. I mean, Kendrick did uh, Untitled 07 live when I went to see him in February and that thing rocked the house down so uh, yeah I mean if you're a Kendrick fan this is still worth owning just to have in your collection even if it's not going to get the most amount of listens damn now uh, I mean not to get into it too much but I mean 
damn was polarizing and I feel polarizing for a reason it definitely felt like a step down after Chipimpa Butterfly and Good Kid Mad City but I mean even when Kendrick feels like he's taking a step back he's still so ahead of the curve it's still such a fantastic album it is a great album but I just feel like maybe we're reaching sellout territory and I'm gonna talk about that with the next one but I think this might have been the catalyst for it but look, track listing for this is overall solid. I just wish that, you know, God, uh, loyalty and love weren't on it. But I mean, yeah, loyalty isn't that bad. God and love, I just can't stand. I wish he didn't play them live and I went to see him. But he did. He finished off with God. And I was just like, oh, this is the worst encore ever, but whatever. Then we move on to this. And this just feels like a cash cow. I mean, I, I still bought it. I mean, there's still some bops. On this, you know, like um, all the stars, uh, all the stars, King's Dead, Big Shot, and Pray for Me are all songs that I like, and I feel like for a mu music soundtrack, it's not that bad. But when Kendrick is making these full album cl instant classic experiences, I just wish this, I just wish, uh, I just wish this didn't feel like a Kendrick album. I know it's technically not a Kendrick album, but I have it lumped in with my other ones because to me, I mean, Kendrick's on like every track here even the ones he's not credited he kind of pops up on anyway but uh yeah um could have been better i think uh probably shouldn't have happened the album cover is nice though and there's uh barely much going on in here and i mean if you like the movie that's one thing but i didn't really enjoy the movie all that much either so uh i mean i enjoyed the soundtrack more than the movie so that probably speaks to uh my feelings on that we've got meatloaf next with bad out of hell pick this up in a record store one day just uh on a whim because i mean bad out of hell you took the words right out of my mouth and two uh two out of three ain't bad as well as paradise by dashboard light i mean this isn't a classic like 10 out of 10 album but i mean it's a pretty fun experience to listen to you got a lyric sheet in here i mean paradise by dashboard light and bad out of hell might be like my two go-to karaoke songs like my two favorite songs to sing along to uh meatloaf's voice is powerful there's a reason this thing sold as many copies and is as popular as it is because it is a great album next we have oh man mad villain mad villainy uh what can i say i bought this album on vinyl off amazon when i just threw it on spotify one day because i'd been hearing about how great this album is meant to be hearing all these rave reviews and these great things about it i just bought it before the album was over because it's one of those things where like you hear this this album's a 10 this album is perfect and you put the album on and i just got it i i'd say let me look at the track listing I'd say by the time I'd got to Curls, just nine tracks in from a 22 track affair, by the time I'd gotten to Curls, I was like, no, this, this, this is it, fam. Um, MF Doom, uh, the MC is Doom, beats Mad Lib. It is obviously um, the 2004 cooperative project from producer MC uh, Mad Lib and MC slash producer MF Doom. Uh, I think Doom and Madlib both feature on some of the songs like Shadows of Tomorrow features Madlib under his alias uh, Quasimodo as well as America's Most Blunted and um, Doom uh, definitely appears on the track Fancy Clown as Victor Vaughn as well this album is just a love letter to any Doom fan I mean this is the album obviously that got me into Doom and I think this is just Doom and Madlib just at their best it's pure chemistry it's pure perfection it is hip-hop abstract hip-hop at its finest doom's lyricism mad libs beats doom's flow hooks need not apply on this album and it just works it just works you need to listen to this album if there was one album for my whole collection i think everyone should hear i think it's this one and we're going to round this off with some heavy metal records Megadeth with their 2018 re-release of Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. This is the final kill edition. The first two sides are the album. Side C and D have some live tracks. 
as well as the last three tracks on side D, I think are the first uh, Megadeth demo that was released. So Last Right to Love to Death, The Skull Beneath the Skin and Mechanics are there as live versions. So you can you can pick this album up and only ever listen to sides A and B and it's a pretty good experience. I've only ever listened to C and D a handful of times. This is one of my favourite Megadeth albums and I'm obviously a massive Megadeth fan as I'm going show with the rest of these records that I've left here. But uh, you've got a nice passage from Dave Mustaine talking about... Um, talking about this record you've got a little bit of vinnie paul here at the bottom a couple of words he had to say as well some really nice pictures of uh, megadeth in their early years around the release of this first album i think this is a great album i really do think that uh it's better for its brevity but it's so aggressive pure powerful and just riddled with angst and anger it's just pure thrash metal at its thrashiest of course they cleaned up their sound and improved overall as musicians and everything else and that is shown on this album peace sells but who's buying it's cleaner the riffs leads are more intricate it's less just pure pace but it's still ridiculously fast and there is more melody more harmonic elements and that will be expanded upon further in uh, subsequent releases. A lot of people debate between this and Rust in Peace as their favourite Megadeth album. I'll talk about Rust in Peace when we get to Rust in Peace, but I mean Wake Up Dead, Conjuring, Peace Cells just those three songs alone are enough to own this record. Album cover is fantastic. It's nice to see pictures of, uh, you know, Mr. Mustaine there as a young boy, Chris Paul and, uh, God I forget uh, Gary Samuelson and David Ellison just looking all baby face and fresh if I can get uh, you can kind of see Dave there looking all baby faced and fresh it's a great album was this the first album with actual like Vic on the cover I think it was uh, maybe so good so far so what or was that their second album I can't even remember which one came out first uh, next we do have that album Rust in Peace and this is my favourite metal album so like I mean without a quite like Maybe Master of Puppets, but no. I, th I think, like, nine times out of ten I'm going to go for this. Because, just... Let me just turn this around and look at this track listing here. That's a ten. Ten, ten, ten. And then five more tens. I mean, okay, maybe not Dawn Patrol, but Dawn Patrol is basically just a lead-in to Rust in Peace Polaris. I mean... This album artwork is fantastic. My dad picked this up. I remember this arrived in the post. It was the first record I bought along with Black Star and uh, my original record player. I bought this on the in on the post with the two of them. But this didn't arrive until the next week. I remember this came and my dad was like, "Oh my god, this album artwork is like crazy nice." Vic, some politicians, a little alien, and this thing here, Hangar Eighteen conspiracy nut that's the uh the kind of thing we're looking at da i think dave mustaine actually said that like nick menza was way more into this than him but i think this album bleeds mustaine and mega death is basically the dave mustaine solo project a lot of people say that but i mean i think that's fair for a lot of mega Death's releases but this lineup here just feels like a super group to me more than the dave mustaine project and i think at least with this lineup it just felt like so much more than just dave mustaine and friends it was megadeth through and through we've got two more uh, megadeth albums we've got two picture discs to round out the collection because you know when i bought these on amazon this is countdown to extinction as well as let me just let me just pick this one up and just talk about them together and talk a little bit about picture discs we've got countdown to extinction and euthanasia Ooh. Uh, euthanasia there you can see it um these are two of my favorite megadeth albums and uh, like i said uh this is really when they started to go they're like much more radio friendly especially with the uh, you know symphony of destruction being the smash it that it was and i mean i'd stay if i had a rock or a radio metal station around me they would probably still play that song i just don't have anything like that and the euthanasia cover is fantastic euthanasia is my second favorite megadeth record let me just say that i mean i absolutely love the track listing in this and i feel like yeah there is you know um a toot le monde which everyone any megadeth fan or thrash metal heavy metal fan would know but i mean songs like addicted to chaos train of consequences and victory are just super underrated and it's super fun to listen to this album 
it's less focused on both of these albums are less focused on you just breaking your neck when you're headbanging but it's much more rhythmic and much more forceful impactful um picture discs now look as i said in the first video i'm not the biggest audiophile in the world but um i don't exactly have a problem with them uh, i like kind of having the artwork uh and i'd like you know just a colored vinyl that's usually like for me that's the dream combo but i mean i only own these two but i don't think they sound all that bad so um yeah for anyone who's like apprehensive about buying picture discs i say at least get one or two and like try them out because i don't think there's anything wrong with these and if it's the only way you can pick these up or the easiest way to pick up a record is on picture discs and i, I just say go for it but that's just me and that's just part two of uh, my record collection um a couple of things i want to say um I'm going to review the Brockhampton album, but I don't know when that's going to come about this week. Uh, you can check my Twitter. I ho Hopefully, I'll be able to keep you guys updated. Anyone that's interested to know when that's coming out. Uh, I've just been caught a ton of personal stuff. I wanted to review two or three albums this week. I think I'm only just going to get the Brockhampton one done, in all honesty. And that's kind of just out of my control. I'm doing this as a passion project, basically, just because I love talking about music. I'm not going to have time. To review anything else maybe do something in the future on like maybe at the end of the year just a couple of minutes on albums i missed throughout the year i'm super sorry about that guys uh there is more stuff i wanted to do i'm doing this video right now because it's pretty easy to do and i don't need to script it or edit it or anything like that but uh yeah so if you enjoyed that video uh or this video even please like it I dislike it if you didn't you can leave a comment on what you thought uh your own record collection some record you think i should pick up your thoughts on these thoughts on picture discs thoughts on the video any constructive criticism as i always say guys super uh thankful super appreciative if you can actually provide any of that you can follow me on twitter easiest way to keep updated with me and subscribe if you want to see more all right guys thanks for watching peace